Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, then welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT in Chicago, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe. At the moment, I'm not at IIT, I'm at home and this is week three of shelter in place and I'm looking forward to going back to the old world. I'm not a, a fan of this new world where we're stuck inside. Uh, I hope everybody out there is doing well, staying safe, sane, and healthy. Today's tutorial is looking at a plugin for Grasshopper called Mesh Plus. What can you do with Mesh Plus? Well, to be honest, you can do a whole lot of things, and we're going to look at a few of the things that we can do. What you're seeing right now is something that we'll do at the very end of the tutorial, which is making a weave pattern. All right, before we jump into the tutorial, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do, and go ahead and click on subscribe and click on the little bell and click on all to receive all the notifications. Recently we've made it to 5,000 subscribers. Pretty happy about that. My next goal is to get to 6,000. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name Alfonso and my last name Peluso. See what I'm up to with my students. Ah, What I'm up to with my students, well we're doing a lot of Zoom teleconferencing I I haven't given in yet and posted an image of us on zoom I see a lot of people are doing that I guess I'm reluctant to do that at the moment uh, I posted this this morning which was just showing my latest Karumba form finding video all right mesh plus okay so I'm just on graph grasshoppers form here and mesh plus was developed by David Mans if you don't know him I don't know him personally either but I googled him and looked at a lot of the work that he's done and is doing and uh, a lot of really great cool stuff so a shout out to David Manns um, and especially for this Mesh Plus which we've been using at IIT for a while now and what I like about this page is he defines some of the um, categories of Mesh Plus so if you're not sure what each category does in Mesh Plus you can come here and take a look at that. You can download Mesh Plus of course at Food for Rhino where pretty much all the plugins for Grasshopper can be found. Okay so this continues with a I mean it doesn't necessarily continue but it, it, it goes along with a video that I made on Weaverbird. Some of you might have used Weaverbird which is another mesh subdivision subdivision plugin for Grasshopper and it's a really great one too. And it's this idea of taking geometry that's not very complex like this cube here and subdividing it into something that's more complex. That's That's one way to look at it. Another way that I look at this is um, I, I talk about structural topology or in this case it could be mesh topology or surface topology and here I have an image of Zaha Hadid's latest residential tower in Miami and this to me is an example of structural topology optimization because we're looking at this very interesting organic exoskeleton so I think of this as probably an optimized exoskeleton. I don't know that for sure, but when I look at this building and I compare it to Chicago's John Hancock, which is the exoskeleton of, let's say, you know, the 1970s or 1980s, which is just the X-bracing, and I look at Zaha Hadid's version of that. So I think of structural topology optimization. All right, so let's let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial okay so what I have here is I have this this mesh 
and you won't need this mesh we're gonna we're gonna work with a different one but just to to give you an example of of how we can use mesh plus and what we can apply it to now what I want to talk about with this is uh, well I want to talk about meshes triangular versus quad but before we get to that in grasshopper there's a shortcut which is control M which displays the mesh edges so uh, I just used Control M, but that was in Rhino, which maximizes and minimizes the viewport. But if my Grasshopper window is current, that will turn the mesh edges on and off. And by default, they're not on. So we want to be able to see that. So that's Control M, and you can also get to that from the Grasshopper menu under Display, and then go down to Preview Mesh Edges. Okay, so this mesh that we're looking at right now has triangular faces, and we can see that here. Now, if I want to make that quads, I can use Mesh Plus. Now, let's look at our Mesh Plus menu here. So that's, that's here. Okay, so th these are triangular, and if I go to Mesh Plus under Smooth, and I choose Weighted Catmull Clark Subdivision, so I'll go ahead and plug that in, and now I'm working with quads. And we're going to see why that's important in a little while. So just pointing that out, just talking about that, the type of mesh geometry that you're starting with. Okay, so we're going to start out by looking at volume. Under volume, I'm going to choose box. Okay, so <laughs> I I laugh. I'm laughing now because the you know the first time you pull down one of these capsules from Mesh Plus, it could be terrifying <laughs> because there's so many inputs on the on the left hand side. So, uh, but after you work. After you work in it for a while, I guess you get used to seeing that, but it is scary at first glance. So the first input is typically the mesh. Okay, so I, I, I need to point out that this is a mesh editing plugin, so you're working with meshes. So I'm going to plug mesh in to G0, and you can hover over these to see exactly what they're looking for so this says open or closed mesh or curve okay so we see that and right away we you know it, we get something very interesting in terms of um, a structural topology so I'm gonna hide I'm gonna hide this capsule this mesh capsule I'm gonna do that using control Q that hides that so now we can see that there's voids inside these triangles so this mesh is a triangular structure because it started with triangular faces. So just to just to compare this, what we were looking at before, if I go down to my Catmull Clark subdivision and I use that instead, so I'm going to plug my mesh into that, and I'm going to plug this. Now the out mesh is coming out of A, and I'm going to plug that into G0. So you see that's a very different structural topology okay alright let's plug this back in and let's start going down the list here move this a little bit closer okay so at the moment we see that there are some values some default values that are plugged into the input sides and what I like to do is I like to start with depth. So here we have D, I, I'm calling it depth or distance. And you see that it has a default value of one. So I'm gonna double click and I'm working in millimeters just, just uh, so you know and we'll see that in a little bit too. So I'm gonna double click and type in let's say 10 point five 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 so I have a number slider that will go from 0 to 100 and it's gonna have three decimal places okay so 
now we're seeing the depth of that. So I'm in millimeters, so this is about 10 and a half millimeters. Oh, look at that. Someone commented on one of my Instagram videos. Maybe it's one of you <laughs> in, in real time. All right. Okay, so we see that. That's controlling the depth. Now, something else worth looking at is if I zoom in, this is not closed geometry yet. So just below distance or depth, there is an input for close. And that's using a true false. So that's using a Boolean toggle. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in Boolean and choose Boolean toggle. And if I change that to true, that's capping or making it a closed geometry. Okay, so we have that closed. Now we're going to start to control some of these other inputs. So the T inputs, these are controlling vertices. So let's take a look at that. And these, you see that they're set by default to 0.5. So using number sliders from 0 to 1 makes sense. Okay, because if you go beyond 1, let's just take a look at it. So I'm going to type in 1.555. Let's see if we can. Okay, so beyond one, it closes in the open areas. So beyond one doesn't doesn't really work. I mean, it does create something pretty fascinating, but um, <laughs> you see what's going on there. All right, so I'm going to double click and zero zero works too but I'm gonna s I'm not gonna have it down to zero so I'm gonna say point zero zero five less than nine point nine 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 okay so not quite zero not quite one all right so I'm gonna plug this in all right so there I get a very thin structure So you see I have a lot of control over that. And I'll copy and paste this. Okay, and then that's in the other direction. So I have a lot of control over that. I'm going to align these. This one, we're going to use this number slider a few times. So this, I'm going to go ahead and call it depth. And the reason I'm naming that one is because that number slider is not between 0 and 1. It's between 0 and 100. These are between 0 and 1. Okay. All right, and we'll explain these. Now, what's happening in Mesh Plus is it's, it's manipulating the vertices. So we have control over multiple vertices. In this case, it, we had just control over the two vertices. So in a sense, it's it's mesh plus is mesh manipulation, but it's also vertice or vertex manipulation. Okay, so that's our that's our volume box. Then the next one I want to look at is effects. So just to show you where we were before, under volume, we had chose box. Okay, now I'm going over to effects and I'm choosing one of the effects. So I'm going to choose anti snub. Okay, so even more inputs. <laughs> All right, so this, this idea of snub or anti snub. Um, so, what I would say that that, you know, when I was looking on the web and what I could find to best show you guys is, is this, this image here which shows a vertice from a cube in the upper right and then the vertice being split into three and then being pulled inward and creating this chamfered edge. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Now, one way to look at what we're working on is not always to look at it with something that was uh, complex geometry. And this isn't that complex, but 
it's a you know it's a manipulated mesh so to see what some of these capsules do in mesh plus sometimes it's best to to work with something very simple and then move to the complex okay so that's what we're going to do in this case all right so let's i'm going to go ahead and hide that okay so i'm going to make a a plane a plane surface and I'm going to flip it upward, so this is going to be an X, Z, and I'm going to make it 100 by 100. Again, I'm, I'm working in millimeters. Uh, the reason I'm working in millimeters is because um, me and my students, we do a lot of 3D printing, and we're, you know, if you're making 3D prints, you're working in metric, you're working in millimeters, because that's that's what the 3D printer understands. So this is 100 by 100. Okay, so same, it's the same size as, as that mesh. Okay, same size. Okay, so let's go ahead and We need to convert this to a mesh, so I'm going to use mesh surface. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn these capsules off using Control Q. Okay, so this mesh is divided in U and V count, and I can control that here. So let's I'm going to say that this is 1 between 1 and 10 so that it uh, you know doesn't go too high and it doesn't go down to 0. The reason I don't want it to go too high is I'm trying not to crash the computer <laughs> while I'm making the video. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay. All right, so we have control over that. All right, so we'll do something similar than we uh, something similar to what we did above so we're going to plug this in okay so you start to see what's happening here and let's go ahead and turn this capsule off okay so this is where I want to start with the depth again so I'm going to take these that we already have and bring these down here okay so my depth lower this down a little bit okay so here's my depth I mentioned it's for me it was it was good to start with the depth because I could start to understand what this capsule could do for me if you just start moving vertices it's not always apparent what the final result might be so here's my depth so we see that we're getting a 3D extrusion basically. It's taking those middle vertices and, and extruding those outward. So those are peeking out. Um, something else is that's really helpful is actually seeing the color of this without doing a custom preview. So typically if you've guys seen my if you have seen my other videos, I use this custom preview a lot. And it doesn't really, let's turn this off, control Q, and let's make this wireframe. It doesn't work as good as with some of the surface geometry that we've looked at before for seeing the, the results, but what works really well is there's a color input on this capsule. So I'm going to use a color swatch. All right, so we're going to use color swatch. I'm going to turn this capsule back on. Okay, I'm going to plug that in. So that works a lot better. And I can add, if I want to do a gradient color, I can copy and paste this, change the color of that, and plug that in. Okay, so now I get a, a gradient color. Okay. 
So this one is manipulating one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. So I'm just plugging these in one at a time. So starting to see where the control is. That one's pretty cool because now it's actually going inward. All right, this one is going to be above. So let's, so I'll just plug in these in one by one, and then I'm, I'm just min, you know moving the number slider back and forth to see what see what happens. You can see that where there's some self intersecting. Oh, because for some reason this is going past one. Is this going past one? Ah, these are going past one. All right, let's fix that. So. 0 less than 0.555 alright you guys were probably wondering earlier I was probably talking about number sliders going from 0 to 1 and then I had made them to go past 1 okay so I f fixed that alright so we'll just copy and paste it Plug it in, see what it affects. So you see we have a lot of control. Okay, and there's one more here. There's actually two more. Okay. <laughs> I think today this is the the one that has the most inputs that we're going to work with today. All right. Okay. So we can see what's happening here. Okay. So now this is not giving us a three-dimensional mesh okay now it has a it has a boolean toggle here for for close and let's look at what that is so that's a little bit different so that just turns it into a solid object not not so I shouldn't say solid but you can see what it's doing it's it's filling in these areas of the mesh okay All right, so how do we how do we turn this into something that is three dimensional or a solid object? Let's let's continue with this um, you know concept that we're going to be three D printing this. So if I go to edit, there is a mesh offset and extrude. Okay, so I'm going to plug this one in. I'm just looking at my my outline here so I have mesh offset at the bottom but we're gonna look at it <clears throat> with this effects as well okay and the reason I want to look at it now I'm just thinking that um, there's been cases where this mesh offset and extrude hasn't worked and I've had to use another method so let's see if it works with this one yeah, see that's exactly what I was looking for so that's not giving me my thickness there so in instead of that I can use something from Weaverbird. If you haven't looked at my tutorial on Weaverbird, I'm going to put a link uh at the end of this video, a little thumbnail that you can click on. But Weaverbird has a something called a mesh thicken. Okay, there's Weaverbird's mesh thicken. And in this case I could use that to to get start to get some depth to that or turn it into a solid and we'll look at that again a little bit later so just keep in mind that the effects they don't have any thickness they're not solid objects okay so let's go back to our I'm gonna hide this one okay let's go back to this first one that we used which is called box and I'm going to turn that on. Okay. So 
let's zoom in a little bit here. So you see this is pretty thin right here. So I'm going to increase, figure out, there we go, there's that one there. Okay, so these, uh, these inputs, T0, T1, and so on, the units are consistent as well as the depth. And what I mean by consistent is I'm working in millimeters. So these number sliders, they're actually outputting millimeters. So let's take a look at that. There's that I want to look at, and then what type of mesh is coming out of this. So I'm going to use a mesh container, and I'm going to plug that in. And I am going to right-click on that and bake it. Okay. So there, it's it's there. It's in Rhino now. And I'm going to use a distance. Now, when I'm measuring this distance, my my vertex snap is on. My vertex snap has to be on because when I'm working with meshes, it doesn't find meshes don't have endpoints. They have vertices. So I'm using the vertices snap here. So that says 9.327. That was the depth. 9.327. Now with one of these other ones, let's see if I can do this. Okay. 1.517. So let's see. That would have been that would have been in this direction. So I'm glad we're looking at this. So the depth was right on. This this movement is not so much the thickness uh, as it is the distance that the vertice is moving. So that's just something you need to keep in mind when you're when you're 3D printing this. Okay. All right. I'm gonna delete that. All right. What is next? All right. We're gonna look at volume batwing gyroid. <laughs> so what is that? Okay, so this, you've probably seen many images like this on the web, especially now with parametric modeling being so popular. So gyroid, a gyroid is an infinitely connected, triply periodic minimal surface. All right, so it's a, it's a tessellated minimal surface. All right. Let's take a look at making that in Mesh Plus. Okay, so I will hide these capsules. Okay, so we're going to do that with this, this plane, okay, with our simple plane. We're going to look at it with a simple plane. Here's the mesh version of that. We'll get rid of this anti-snub. Okay, so this is under volume, and I'm going to choose Batwing. Okay, I'm going to plug my mesh into G0. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with the depth. Okay, so starting to look already like that gyroid. So let's, let's add the color in so you can see it better. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to have to do some... All right, another like. All right, so we're going to have to do some mesh, mesh subdivision on this. We'll have to plug in all these values to see uh, how it affects it. So, and this one doesn't need a Boolean toggle. So we have, start to lower these down. All right, so we have T3. So we're seeing that. Changes to that. T2. Some changes to that. Now I think it's it's important, which I didn't do, is is to look at some of these defaults, so you know what it looked like 
where when it started. Okay. Let's plug these in. So you can see we have a lot of functionality, a lot of control. Okay. So we don't need this one. And we don't need this one. We haven't talked about I. I, I think, lets you put in a list of vertices to affect or uh, a list of mesh faces to affect. We've just been letting it affect all the mesh faces. OK. So now we're going to use some mesh smoothing on that. We've, we've looked at that a little bit. So lots of options for mesh smoothing. We're going to look at the weighted Catmull Clark subdivision. And we're going to go ahead and plug that in. OK, and to see this better, we're going to turn off the bat wing, just selecting it using Control Q. OK, so now we're starting to see some, some smoothing on that. OK, so how do we get more smoothing? So this is where you got to be careful. Again, just, you know, our goal is <laughs> keep our computer from crashing. I'm going to widen this out. So getting the proportions of this tessellated minimal surface is a little bit tricky, getting the right proportion. You could spend some time with that. OK, so this has, this has what's called loops or, uh, you know, what's the amount of subdivision you want to add or what's the amount of smoothing. The higher the value, the more smoothing. And you don't really need a lot. You know, between 0 and 3 is typically enough smoothing for this. So I'm going to I'm going to make a number slider between 0 and 3. Okay, so I think default is 1. So 0 0 might return an error. No, it it works. Okay. So it smooths it to 0 and there's one, there's two, all right, pretty smooth. And then there is three, which is really smooth. All right, so that's pretty cool. All right, what do we have left? All right, the last thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at weave, which I showed you at the very beginning of the tutorial. So let's look at that. All right, I'm going to turn this off. Now, I didn't dare try that with that structure. <laughs> I, it could work, but uh, it would have probably crashed the computer during during the video without the right inputs. So I, I, I stayed away from that. OK, so there is a, a weave tab here. And I'm going to choose. So there's some options there, and I'll, I'll ask a question about that at the very end. But I'm going to choose weave. Okay, not as many inputs as the as the bat wing. So I'm going to take this for now and just take it out of there. Okay, and we'll put the weave in instead. All right, so plugging in the geometry that I want to weave. It's not really. It's not that obvious. Maybe if you've done it, it's uh, I mean you've seen it work. It's a little bit more obvious that there's a weave pattern in there. Um, I'm going to plug in the the depth. Okay, so you see that controlling the depth. Okay, now there is a boolean toggle for that as well. And this one says that it's an optional Boolean specifies if the new faces will be quads or triangles, which we talked about at the beginning. I don't see a reason to make this triangular. So I'm leaving it true, which is just quads. OK, we have our color. The color is just the color helps so much to be able to see what's happening here. Okay, let's get these lined up. Okay, so we have our, 
our T1. Let's see what that's controlling. We have our T0. Can see what that's controlling. All right, we won't need these two. All right, so with this weave, we're seeing what we saw when we did the effects is that there's no thickness to the mesh. So we're going to add a thickness to the mesh. So I'm going to try to use the one that is with mesh plus, which is the mesh offset and extrude. Okay, I'll plug that in. All right, so I'm also getting All right, so it's not liking it. All right, I just can't remember if that was the case before, probably, and that's why I was showing you the Catmull Clark subdivision. Now, it, I have seen it work, so let's let's go back for a second. All right, so. If we take if we take this mesh and we use it for our our box. Okay, so there's our there's our box. Well that one doesn't need to be extruded. Okay. So sorry, bear with me for the moment. Alright, so that's not working there. The mesh offset's not working. So we're going to use, go ahead and delete that. We're going to use the Weaver Bird Mesh Thicken. I feel like that worked for, um, for the weave. And it's probably going to be one of these things that I figure out what's happening after the video. And then I just leave some comments. Uh, I leave a comment in the... Um, I leave a comment just explaining why and how to make it work but anyway let's take a look at this all right so get rid of this for a second I'm just troubleshooting as I go not thinking out loud but thinking in my head here what what my next steps are okay so here we we're looking at Let's turn this capsule on. Let's turn this one off. Okay, so here I'm doing some mesh subdivision on it. So I'm wondering now with the subdivision, the reason I'm doing that now versus after the extrusion is I'm wondering if this is going to work. There we go. All right, so it di it is working uh, after I did the subdivision. I don't have a uh, an explanation for it. It may be that it it likes the quad mesh better than what was coming out of the weave, but now we're able to give that a thickness. So if I zoom in, you'll see you'll see that this is open. It's not closed. So let's take a look at some of these inputs here. Let's again we'll start with the depth. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take these, bring these over here. So we'll look at the depth first. Okay, way too much depth. Okay, so this is open. Now, to close this up or to cap it, it's actually using these Boolean toggles. So, true is going to close it. So, I'm going to change this to true. So, let's just start by plugging these in. Okay. Now those two didn't do anything. 
there, that one capped it. So depending on the type of mesh that you're working with, um, these may or may not do anything. It's finding the one that you might need all three, you might need just one. So in this case, we just needed the one. Okay. All right, so here's the depth. All right, so that's working pretty good. So the last thing would be to talk about, uh, you know, when, when we output this this weave, what kind of mesh or how, how good is the mesh in terms of is this something that we can actually 3D print? Okay. All right, let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and bake this. So I think it's helpful if you put a mesh capsule, a mesh container really. This is containing the mesh. And then that's something that you can bake. All right, let's take a look at that. Let's see if I close Grasshopper and I change this to be rendered so we're getting the color now let's take a look at this when I you know this is when I look at this in shaded there we go we can start to see looks like there's some holes in it and I wasn't seeing that in grasshopper I just I just typed in grasshopper again so that my grasshopper mesh is, is showing okay but when I close Grasshopper, it looks like there's voids in the in the model. So what could that be? So if I select this and I type in the command check, it's telling me that there's 60 mesh faces where the face normal differs from the vertex normals. Okay, it's telling me that. Um, it's telling me that there's some mesh faces with directions that are different and in, in in one case it's telling me that this can cause problems with mesh boolean operations like if I'm going to subtract from it which I'm, I'm not this one is telling me that it's uh, giving me issues for rendering so th these 60 faces 60 faces where the mesh normals are different meaning they don't they don't have the they all they don't all have the same direction or orientation so rhino can't always fix these things but i think in this case if i use unify mesh normals okay so that that flipped those mesh normals or unified the direction so that's looking pretty good now if i if i check this okay so that fixed those issues the only other issue that you would have with 3D printing is this, where it's where the mesh is two disjoint pieces. Okay, so and if we orbit around here, uh, it's viewing these as two separate pieces. So if you need to 3D print this, uh, a software called Netfab, something Autodesk owns it now. That would it has some repair options in it and that would be able to repair it all right well I hope you found this video helpful and if you did give me a thumbs up leave me some comments if you're if you're using mesh plus there was so much in mesh plus to use if you're using it tell me how you're using it share share with me how you're using it all right well again I hope everyone's doing well and stay healthy during this time and i will see you on the next video